Ebony, you are capable, you are more than able, your hand is not too short, your glorious outstretched arm is there, Father, and you are ready for the taking of our very lives. If we will just become that living sacrifice and lay down on the altar, Dr. Jesus, you will operate on us, take out the self, and put the glory of God on him. The royal daughter is all glorious within the palace. Lord, we want your glory to be in us, within us, in our palace, in our home. Yes. Make us the royal priesthood that has the glory of God within. Yes. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her and the glory in her midst. Lord, we want fire on the outside and glory on the inside. Fire of God on the outside of this meeting. Glory. Jesus, the one who walks in the midst of the yes. candlesticks, the one who walks in the yes. midst of the church, who says, I will dwell in them and walk in them. Be our glory in our midst, O oh yes. God. And be the glory within our hearts and give us a glory heart, Lord, that we would be a fountain unto people, a great wellspring, yes. and people would pant, Lord, as it were, for the, the brooks of God, the, 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 the drink of God, that they would come and partake and be able to drink of the springs of life, the glory heart that you put within each one here. God, I pray for a monumental change, Lord, in each one of us, God, that we would be able to live our lives as a perpetual worship, Lord, that people would be able to look upon our lives as a great psalm and be able to identify Jesus in the lines and yes, say, Lord. I see God in that. Amen. He's a living epistle, and when I read his life, I see Jesus, Lord. Lord, the holy standard of the holy God of Jacob, Jesus Christ, be seen today and imitated. And Lord, by each one, God, we come to you with helpless as little children, Lord, and say, Papa, feed us food from heaven, God. Lord, grace was poured upon your lips, and we're asking for that grace today, Lord. Lord, you know I'm nothing more than a blundering fool, oh God. You have mercy on me. Please, oh God, I beg you, Lord, to come to these people who supported your servant, Father. If you could, Father, bless these people with your word by your touching, I'd be most grateful to you. Thank you, my Lord. So come, oh God, and have your way. Yes, Father. Open up your word to our hearts and our hearts to your word. Yes, yes my Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A soldier of mercy. Today's message is entitled, A Soldier of Mercy. You know, God Himself is a soldier. Yeah. And He's training us to be soldiers. Moses, after he defeats the army with God in front of him and behind him says, The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Yes. David says, The Lord is strong and mighty in battle. Yes. Hallelujah. He is interceding for our souls even now and is still ministering to us. Yes. And my Bible says, Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my arms for war and my fingers for battle. Who is making us great intercessors and showing us how to be ministers of reconciliation to a dying world. And right now we're at the midnight hour. Jesus is about to come. It's going to be the darkest night in history. The midnight hour. It's going to be pitch black. Are you ready? Are your hands trained? What does war look like for a soldier? How can we be trained? You know... I want to just give something that God really just showed to me over this week. I wasn't even praying. It just kind of came into me. Because when we talk about soldier and giving our lives, we have to realize what Jesus calls the greatest in the kingdom of God. And the first thing is, we have to be converted as little children. The children is the greatest in the kingdom. Yes. Then the, the second thing is, the greatest is the servant of all. The slave of all. Those are the two things that Jesus calls the greatest in the kingdom when I read through the Gospels that I see. And then it's only after that we can become a soldier. Because first we have to become a child of God and realize His great love. Realize His goodness 
the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, the goodness of our life, that the Lord is good to all and His tender mercies are over all His works, every intricate working of your life, trial and situation. He is a good, good Father. Yes, yes. We need to have that understanding because um, when we become, before we become a slave, He is Adonai. He is Lord. He is Master. He is Owner. And for you to become a slave of all to others unto God, you have to first see His goodness. You first have to come into the sonship before you say, now I'm willing to be a bond servant or a slave of Jesus Christ. Now you're ready with the heart of a child and the understanding that my life is a slave unto the Lord. You're willing to become a soldier. Now you're ready, but it comes from the heart of a child and a willingness, a willingness to become a love slave to others unto the glory of the Lord. And that, my friend, is a great soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are soldiers of mercy. What is God's mercy? God's mercy is God's supply system to meet every need everywhere. Every need everywhere. Whether it's a bird of the air or a fish of the sea, God is always meeting their needs. The eyes of all look expectantly to you and you give them their food in due season. The eyes of every fish, the eyes of every bird, the spider, and even you and me. Every single need that is met is the mercy of God. And we are to be mercy doers on this earth. If somebody needs a bite of food and I give them food, that's the mercy of God. I met their need. If somebody needs me to sacrifice sleep all night because their wife is having trouble in labor, I have to stay up all night and I pray for them and I meet that need. That's the mercy of God. So the mercy of God is God's supply system for whatever need there is. And when you meet that need, that is mercy. It might, it might look like a word of correction. No. It's meeting the need. If you need to become somebody that bears the rod of correction to show the love of God, that's fine. But if you need to become a doormat for somebody else also, whatever meets the need. You know, I'm not going to draw big parallels of a soldier today. We know, we know somewhat about being a soldier of the Lord. But I do want to say that that a soldier, you know, the government owns them completely. You know, they give them their life and they live to the higher power of another. And, and as soldiers of Jesus Christ, we have to know that He has bought us with the price of His blood. We're just going to start a, uh, a standard, these first couple points. It's just going to be a standard. We're bought with the price of His blood. We're no longer owning our lives, but He owns us. He bought us. And now all our rights are wrong. And when we read the Bible, I don't see too many rights that we have. Maybe creamy or peanut bowl, creamy or crunchy one. When it comes to your sandwich, you know, that's the kind of choices you have. But He's sovereign, He's Lord over every area, every area of your life, every area of your life, He is Lord over. We live to the higher power of another. Let's talk about the love of a soldier. The love of a soldier. The love of God is full of sacrifice. Yes. yes. Full of sacrifice. Jesus went to the cross and sacrificed Himself unto the glory of God. You are to go to the cross and sacrifice yourself for others for the glory of God. You, my friend, are a living sacrifice. Have you been bought with His blood? Has He paid the price for you? Have you said yes to His Lordship? Brother, you are a living sacrifice. Who wants the oil of the Holy Spirit? Who wants the fire of God in your lives? Listen very closely. The fire never fell on the altar. The fire fell on the sacrifice. You want the fire of God in your life? Become a living sacrifice. You'll see oil like you never seen. You'll start fires like you never knew. Praise God. 
You are that sacrifice. And to live and give divine love here on the earth, we have to have heavenly wisdom. Please let this saying fall into your ears. Whatever happens to you is temporal. But your response to it makes it eternal. Amen. Whatever happens to you is temporal. But your response to it makes it eternal. 1 Corinthians 13. We see the first aspect of love talks about is love suffers long and is kind. That means whatever you suffer in your life, no matter what it is, first of all, you need patience. Because you're going to suffer long. It might say patience in your Bible. But you have to be kind. Well, why is that? Why is it whatever you suffer, you need to be kind? Because what only ha whatever happens to you is just for a moment. It's the present time of this suffering. It's not eternal suffering. The person you're going to suffer for might suffer eternal suffering if you're not kind. And show the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Because it's His goodness that leads to repentance. Amen. Whatever happens to you is temporal. But your response to it makes it eternal. I dread the day I'm going to stand before God. It's not something to take lightly to fall into the hands of the living God. You ought to have the fear of God in you and realize you're going to give an account. Paul writes to Timothy, you therefore must endure hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Buck up, soldier! That's right. I love the Lord. Prove it in your actions. Amen. As a first class soldier, it says in the Amplified, you want to be a first class or second class soldier? What do you want? Do you want to live up to God's expectations or your own expectations? Okay, the mind of a soldier. What is the mind of a soldier? Lowliness of mind. The mind of a soldier is low and it always puts other people first. You take second place, the other person has first place. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, it says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in lowliness of mind esteem others better than yourself. Do not only look out for the your, your own interests, but also look out for the interests of others. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Is it possible? My Bible tells me he's able to subdue all things unto yes, himself. Including you. Including that beast nature that I have in me. It's able to be subdued. And what kind of mind does this soldier have? One that esteems others better than himself. I don't look out for my own interests. I look out for the interests of others. Thinking has to change. I actually think people are better than me. I actually believe these people in India are better than me. So I go there and I want to give my eye. I went down riding in the car with, with a woman and, 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 her, and the pastor and his family. And she needed something behind her head. So I simply gave her my coat. And I really wanted it for my head. I esteemed her better than myself. I gave the mercy of God at her need. It can be something as so small as that. But it's always putting the other person first. That is the love of God. It's very simple. Paul writes in the NIV in Romans 12, 10. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. Listen, to be devoted in love. To be diligent in love. Steadfast in brotherly love. And this is love. You have to honor others above yourself. That means you take the slave of all position and you lift them up. It's very simple, really. You're either in the love of God or you're out of the love of God. When you honor yourself first, you're not in the love of God. When you honor first, others first, you're in the love of God. It's that simple. 
if you're only thinking about you and looking to your own interest, and every time you put yourself first, you're not in love with God. That's the measuring line. You gotta step on something. Jesus became that stepping stone. That's Christ's likeness. Blind Bartimaeus. Jesus! This is a blind man. Son of David! Have mercy on me! The people are telling him, be quiet. Come on, man. He's not worried about you. Son of David! Have mercy on me! The Bible says. Jesus stopped, calls the man over, and he turns to this blind beggar and says, What is it you want me to do for you? Rabbi, that I might receive my sight. Let it be done according to your faith. The man is healed in his eyes, and he began to follow Jesus from that way forward. Glory to God for his human miracle. But brother, can you see the heart of God? Can you see the meek and lowly Jesus? At the cry of a beggar, the King of glory, the one who's a star breathing God, the one who knows them in number, the one who knits you together in your mother's womb, the one that is predestined every path, he stops at the cry of a beggar. Thank you, my 
He turns. And now you see lowly Jesus taking orders from the bed. Who was lower? Was it the beggar? Or was it Jesus? It was Jesus. He became a stepping stone so that man could advance in the kingdom of God. He followed Jesus. He followed God. Mother Teresa did something very similar. She didn't have to become a nun. She became a nun. She didn't have to serve as a missionary. She became a missionary. She didn't have to go into Calcutta in India. She could have been one of those nice institutes that I see in Bangalore. But no, she served among the poor beggars of India. And she ministered to them. And she did a good job. We still hear her testimony around the world to this day. But my question to you is who was lower? Was it... The beggars, or was it Mother Teresa? Mother Teresa was lower than, than those beggars. She became nothing more than a stepping stone so that they could advance in the kingdom of God. Make no mistake, the Holy Spirit is asking you in your hearts, in your hearts, in your hearts, to become lower than a beggar. That your life could be a stepping stone for others so that they might advance in the kingdom of God. I hope by this little story, if nothing more, you'll fall in love with the making of Jesus. But that's God's calling upon you. Meekness. Well, let me say this first. Everybody wants the power to heal the blind. But who wants the power to take orders from a beggar? Jesus said, concerning my life, I have the power to lay it down. Take it up. Right. True Pentecostal power is laying down your life for others. I have to leave it there. But I'm telling you, that's the power that Jesus had. That's the power that you need. Meekness. Meekness is your heart is flexible. Your heart is flexible. And you bear anything to meet others' needs. Meekness in the Greek is mucus. Or it sounds like our English word mucus. Yeah, mutinous, mucus is, is flexible. Right? And let me, let me, it's kind of gross. Let me use clay as an example. Right? Clay is flexible. Right? But, so clay will form into anything. You are like clay. You need to form into the, any situation, anything, to, to meet the needs of other people. And don't think about clay coming on top of the person because you smother them when you come in with a high mind. But you need to come under them and support them. You need to be that lowly stepping stone. You need to come forward to them by coming under them. Don't lord over the people. Lord under the people. You adapt, you adjust or conform to any situation to meet the needs of others. You adjust to the food, living conditions and the people. Paul went with food and without food. Food. He learned how to, to be abound. He learned how to be abased. To the poor, he became poor. To the rich, he became rich. To the weak, he became weak. He became all things to all men. Jesus was ministering in Mark 3, and he didn't have time to eat food in the house. This family called him crazy. Why did he do it? Just so he could pray for the people and meet their need. That's the mercy of God. Jesus Christ didn't have a place to rest his head. Praise the Lord. It kept him mobile so he could stay his calling and continue to meet the needs of others and give the mercy of God. He was a teacher. He was a preacher. He was a healer. And yes, my brother, he even became the slain lamb. Aren't you grateful? Aren't you grateful for the lamb? 
they both became all things to all men. Yeah. I've learned how to sleep on the rock in the villages, and I've learned how just to wake up in the morning and be in that location, be able to meet the needs of the people. I've learned how to go into California and minister to the uh, to the homeless. And when I speak to them, I speak to them a little bit with the old, I come back from the street background. And you know, I talk to them with a New York accent. How you doing? What's going on? How you doing? Things all right? You know? Why? Because you're becoming all things that all men. I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been administered in, in the castles of Scotland among the richest of the rich, the third richest family in Scotland. And I didn't talk to them like I did with those poor people. You know? I talk to them in an upright mind. And I'm, and I'm happy that I learned etiquette in my life. Amen. I didn't embarrass myself. Amen. But, and, and some of what might say, but you're a poser. But you're, 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 you're playing. You're, you're not being a no. I'm becoming all things to all men. I'm being me. I'm conforming to them just to meet the needs of others. Yes. And yes, I've even had the opportunity to be in the likeness of my God and become a slain lamb for the people. Amen. Isn't it a privilege? Yes. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for His sake. Jesus. It's a great privilege. Yes. Soldiers. Soldiers, that means no complaining, no grumbling, no moping, no slouching, no venting forth of anger. Praise God. And then no covering it up when you did it wrong and said, well, I was just expressing myself. <laughs> if you fail, repent. Just say I'm wrong. Amen. But that's the standard. Meekness is a flexibility and you do anything to meet the other person's need. This is a layered message. It will go deeper in a minute. But this is an all, this, this kind of person, we say some people are all around kind of people, right? They're all around kind of people, right? This kind of person can go all around the world. He can mission anywhere because he'll always conform to meet the needs of others and just meet their need. You know, no wonder God can trust them with the whole earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit. Because yes, yes. you can trust them anywhere in the earth. That's a blessing. God can trust the meek people. That's what that tells me. Lowliness. Lowliness is, I'm going to explain this very simple and don't despise simple things. Lowliness is the companion or channel of mercy. It's it's the companion or channel of mercy. Lowliness like, and mercy, like a husband and a wife, they walk together. You can't have one without the other. And here's an example. This is a lowly heart. Okay? This is a lowly heart. This is a lowly heart. This is the mercy of God. God wants to come and move through you to meet the needs of others. Amen. This is a lowly heart. This is the mercy of God. Okay? He wants to move through you and then meet the needs of others. All kinds of things happen. If, you're, if, if, if you don't have that mercy flowing through you, you become like a stagnant pool. You have no life in you. You know, if, if no mercy will be given to you. But so merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Everything happens when God's life flows through you. You have to have that willing heart, right? This is called the self. Right? If you get offended at the food, and that the people are serving you, you will pluck up the mercy of God. You no longer have a lowly heart. If you're offended at the living condition that you have, you're not upset, you start complaining, grumbling, you will block the mercy of God from coming to you. If it's the people, how could they say that to me? How could they do that? Did they know who I am? I'm a doc, or maybe it will be something more sympathetic, some false humility, or that. Poor sap. He just he's just not so spiritual. You know, he really needs to grow. You know what I'm talking about? That will block the mercy of God. 
What kind of a church has a merciless church? What kind of testimony has a merciless church? What kind of testimony does it have? No testimony. We need to sacrifice the self. The love of God is full of sacrifice. We have to sacrifice this so the mercy of God can flow through us. That's what it means. So that there's a consistent flow of mercy. Let's go another level deeper. Let's talk about the strength of a soldier or we could just say the strength of a Christian. Okay, we'll go to Romans 15 verses 1 through 3. We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each one please his neighbor for his good leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of those who fell on you fell on me. We then who are strong. Who is Paul talking about here? Talking about a strong Christian. Let me pause for a minute here. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you. Lord, that you are the example of the strong Christian God. And I want to thank you, God, that it's only by your mercy. And it's only by your grace that we're able to perform these things. And I just want to bless you, God. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your example. Thank you, O great Lamb of God. A strong Christian, we often think, is somebody that can open the eyes of the blind or move in some kind of miraculous power. But that's not always true. I was at the Bible school, I was an extended time fasting and prayer. And I'm praying for 60 young men, one after another. And I wanted to pray, but God said, no, new impartations. Every one of them was getting hit with the fire of God, one after another. God speaks to me halfway through and says, I want you to move out of the way. There's an open heaven over you. Call your translator over here and let him do it. Tell the people that it's not you, it's God, and prove it to him by calling him over here. So I got out of the way. Brother Bunty came, started laying hands on the people. Boom, boom. Boom, getting the impartation. We're only a vessel. We're only this. That's right. We're only an eyedropper. Okay? When you use the eyedropper, you get filled up with the medicine. You put it around the eye. Right? And then when we're done with it, we don't glorify the what a great eyedropper. It's this stuff that was inside that was important. That's right. We're just vessels. Great illustration. So that's what happened. But you know what? Brother Bunty was living in sin. He got kicked out of the Bible school just a couple weeks for drinking, uh, troubling the children, I believe. Just all kinds of things. You know, getting involved with a woman. Wrong way. But God used to mind your miracles. But that doesn't make you strong. A strong Christian according to the Bible standards. A strong Christian according to the Bible standards is somebody who bears with the scruples of the weak. The weaknesses of the weak. That means when somebody hates you, when somebody curses you, when somebody is spiteful to you, you cover them with love. Love covers over a multitude of sins. Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. When you do good and you serve them, you cover them with love. When you bless he says, bless those who curse you. When you bless the one who's cursing you, you have words of grace seasoned with salt. You're covering them with God's love. And when somebody is spiteful to you, when they use you, when you love them, you cover them. And that, my friend, is the love of God. Pray for them. And this is where lowliness comes in. This is, this is where lowliness comes in. You can't do this without a lowly heart. So I'm going to give you practical, practical ways right now to be lowly and sustain the flow of mercy in your life. God has been speaking to me over these last two years. 
We're putting this together. I'll share a couple of points. One is to keep us in that low place so that God's mercy can flow through us. Is the knowledge of the keeping grace of God. When you have the knowledge of the keeping grace of God, you're able to identify with other people and the mercy of God can flow through you. The knowledge of the keeping grace of God is this. No matter what sin you see on the face of the earth, in your brother, in, in the workplace, believer or unbeliever, you say to yourself, I know it's only God's keeping grace that has kept me from doing the same exact thing. I am capable of doing that and even worse. Murderer, adulterer, even somebody who's in the, you know, the selling the children, the sex slaves, and all these things. All of these people, it's only God's grace that has kept me. What happens then? You're able to identify with the other person. Like Jesus, He was numbered among the transgressors. He was completely identified with them. Completely identified. And what happens when you're able to identify with somebody? The mercy of God can flow. Yes. You can meet their needs. Amen. But the second that you say, I would never do anything like that. Look at that person. The, the self comes. You're not able to identify with that person anymore. You have no longer become clay that comes under them, but you come upon them and you're smothering them. And you cannot be the mercy of God. Today. You cannot. We need to have that. We need to be able to identify with others. I mean, um, you know, it talks about, remember the prisoners, it's written, remember the prisoners that were chained with them. Like I'm chained with another person who's in the prison. That's how much I can identify with another one. We're that connected. We have the same, we have the same chain together. That's how identified we are. I carry the burden around like a weight. And it's a person. That's the way that we have to be identified. I remember when something happened in India, uh, a man, they, 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 they murdered this woman. They, they sexually assaulted her. It was a very horrible thing. The Christians, my, my brother was telling me, were writing on the uh, internet, we should castrate them, we should kill them, all these other things. That's not the love of God. That person knows nothing about the keeping grace of God. He just cuts off that person completely. He actually cuts himself off, actually. If you, if you, if you know it or not. He not only deceives himself, but he cheats himself. Now it takes a real man of God, I want to tell you, to go to the people who have had, who, who were hurt, right? To the families, they lost their daughter. But I want to tell you, it almost takes more of a man of God to go into the prison and to look that felon into the eyes who raped that woman and killed her. And for you to be able to say, right in his eyes, listen, I can do the same exact thing that my God didn't keep me. I am no better than you, and I can do the exact same thing. And to be able to come that low and give the mercy. It only takes more of a man of God. I, I believe. I, you need to know that you're no better than any other person. You need to know that you, you can do worse things than you can even think or imagine. It's only God's grace that has kept you. Glory. Glory to God. Believe it or not, when I'm talking about these things, God's trying to give you a pure heart. He's trying to purify you with this. So that you might be a blessing in the earth. We have to have the knowledge of the keeping grace of God. Now let's move forward. Another thing that we can do to remain lowly so that the very mercy of God can flow through us is compare yourself to the Christ who is sinless and perfect. Don't compare yourself to other people. Because when you look to Jesus and you see His perfection, when you look to Him and you see that He is perfect, now you're able to be humbled and to be obese. You're able to become a stepping stone. You're able to walk in that lowliness. There's none of this that's going to rise up. But as soon as I start seeing, well, at least I'm reading my Bible more than that fellow and that chap, and I'm not doing this, and at least I'm not cursing, and at least I've been in the Lord for 40 years, and at least, you know, I'm fasting and praying, and at least I'm doing this. Come on! Amen. You're only bringing yourself up and you're cutting off God's mercy to people. It's the time you stop expressing yourself in the church. Praise God. And your frustrations. 
Listen, Jesus, it says that he, in the writer of Hebrews says it this way, he was the bright, he was the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Jesus was the express and the, the glorious image of the Father. And it's time that the church stepped up and became a glorious expression of Jesus. And if you keep comparing yourself to other people and being high and haughty and talking about people and thinking you're better, you're only expressing yourself and you're not becoming a glorious expression of Jesus. You can walk in your own glory, but I want to walk in the glory of God. I don't know about you, brother, but I want to stop on this thing. Another thing is to, to keep yourself in a lowly state is to remember the value of a man. Jesus. Remember the value of a man. Can you put a price on a man? Yes, I can, brother. Well, what is that? People are of the value of the blood of Jesus Christ. Believer and unbeliever. Do you believe that? The father believed it and he sacrificed his son. Jesus believed it and he was willing to sacrifice his blood. Do you believe that? Right. Or what are you willing to sacrifice for what you believe? Do you see people as the blood of Jesus? Are you living in such a way that you could say, I believe other people are worth the blood of God. And I'm living that way towards them. Maybe you never thought like this. It's okay. The bar will come up. This is the standard. This is a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the first thing is the knowledge, the keeping grace of God. Compare yourself to Jesus, to the perfect one, the sinless one, and not others. And remember that people are of value of the blood of Jesus. It will help you when you see them in their weaknesses, that you can come under them and be a stepping stone so they can advance in God. It will take the self out so the mercy of God can flow to them and meet their need. And brother, for this, you're going to need a heart attitude that says, it's not about me. It's about meeting the needs of others. It's not about me. It's about meeting the needs of others. <laughs> Those of you who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each one please his neighbor for his good leading to education. It's not about me. I'm not living to please myself. I'm living to please my neighbor. And do what? Do good to him by building him up. By edifying him. You need the heart attitude that says, It's not about me. It's about meeting the needs of others. I'm not pleasing myself. I'm not worried about my reputation. I'm willing to humble myself. Even on the cross to the point of death, like my lowly Savior. Amen. It's not about me. You need to have in your mind that it doesn't matter what happens to you. And whatever happens to you, you're going to meet the needs of others. Jesus, when he was on the cross, says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even though he's on the cross, he's still looking to meet the needs of others. Jesus, when he's sorrowful unto the point of death in the garden and dripping drops of blood out of his eyes, he goes to the disciples and what does he say? Pray for me only, brother. No, he says, pray that you don't fall into temptation. It doesn't matter. Wherever you are, whether somebody puts you on a cross or you have sorrow of soul for whatever reason in your life, you have to look to meet the needs of others. This is where meekness comes in. Meekness, you have to adjust to any person's need, to any life condition, to any kind of food, to any kind of water. You have to conform just to meet the needs of others. I just had this happen to me recently. Uh, I'm going to tell you something personal. You know, I, for a year and a half, I was praying about a young lady who I thought might be a good life partner. And finally, I took another step. I called her father and said, you know, can I have permission to call your daughter? She's a Midwestern girl. So they do things a little bit different in the Midwest. I wanted to honor her father. So, he talks to his wife, he talks to her, and the answer came back, and it was no. And I found out through talking through him that not only was I interested, but there were about four other men that were. She's a wonderful woman of God. And, uh, 
Then after I got the reply, no, she started emailing me. Very friendly emails, just as a sister. And I'm saying, why is this happening? You know, like a short email. She's never had a boyfriend before. They, they don't do that. They just kind of court and they get married. It's, it's different. It's, di it's different. Just be open-minded with the culture, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but the point is here, I'm, going, I'm trying to come to a point here. Yeah. The point is that God showed me that really she has four men. And either three or four of them probably won't want to talk to her anymore. And they were all close men to her. So her need is for brotherly love. Wow. That's her need, is brotherly love. She needs that. And she's a little naive, but that's okay. Love covers. <laughs> you see, somebody doesn't, have to, somebody doesn't have to be weak in a way where they hurt you. They can just be weak in a way that they don't understand. Those of you who are strong, these might... Christians that don't know as much. So we cover them. We don't, we don't kick them. But that cost something. You know? I had to write back emails to her just being a friend. Just being a brother. Even though it's hurting me. Because my expectations are disappointed. But God showed me unmerited grace. Grace always costs somebody something. It costs Jesus' his life to give you the grace of God. He paid with his life. Now we have to be able to pay with our lives or in some way to give grace to others. And uh, the Lord was asking me to pay that price for her, and I did. And I've just been sending her friendly emails. I know it might not seem much like to you, but it's a hard thing, man. I had to conform to this girl and be a friend and give the mercy of God to be her brother. It's not about me. Thank you, Lord. It's not about me. It's about meeting the needs of others. Whether I'm sorrowful to the point of death or you're on a cross. That's the thing. What about you in your life? Do you have a relationship where you've been living for your own good? Where you've been protecting yourself rather than looking to meet the needs of others? What is God calling you to do? Who is the person that God is telling you to come under so that they can advance in God? Who is that person? For you. And more important than anything, if you this is what being Christ-like is. This is what Christ-likeness does. For even He, even the Christ, did not live to please Himself. Do you want to be like Jesus? Do you? Have you found that love of a child that loves his father so much that you're willing to become a love slave to others and, and, and unto God? There is a person who swears even to their own hurt, brothers. That's what the Lord is asking. I haven't been looking at the time. Do you want to talk? It's time to wrap it up. <laughs> Perfect timing. The, la the last thing I'll put up end with just resurrection life for you guys, okay? This is very important. On one side there's sorrow, on the other side there's joy. There's always two sides to cross, there's two sides to God. Jesus, a man of sorrow, is anointed with grief, and on the other side he's anointed with the oil of gladness more than his companions. He suffered more than any other person that ever suffered at all time. But at the same time he had the oil of gladness. He had more joy and the joy of the Holy Ghost than any other friend that he had. Paul walked in this. He said, I will very gladly spend and be spent for your soul, though the more abundantly you love me, the less the, the love you, the less I am loved. In other words, he was very gladly, with joy, joy unspeakable, he was pouring out his life as an offering, spending his soul for other people. But the more that he would do it, the less he was loved. On one side he's suffering, he's suffering, he's suffering. But on the other side he has more joy than any other person. And I want to be a witness before you that this is true in my life. I don't have anything, I don't have much positions. I have a book bag and some clothes and some notes. But God, by His grace and only by His grace, I have been pouring out my life. And I found more joy and more fulfillment than ever before. And I want to speak that to you, that God just doesn't call you to be a soldier and to suffer for others as a first-class soldier and a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He just, just doesn't call you to that. He 
he says, I am your reward. I am the oil of gladness. Yes. And I myself will come in you and rejoice <laughs> with a father's love. Like Jesus rejoiced over the disciples. You'll have that in you. I go gladly wherever I go with little to nothing with joy. And I want you to have that. God wants you to have that. Thank you, Lord. This is, this is what a, a soldier of mercy is. God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. How many want to be a soldier of mercy today? Praise God. That word really blessed my heart. I want to be a soldier of mercy. Amen? Yes. This is a tall order. It's a denial of self. But Jesus calls us to die of self daily. And oftentimes we think that we are dying to self daily. But then those little things creep up. And, and clog that, that flow with that, that example that he used. And God's mercy can't flow if there's anything in there impeding that. To be a soldier of mercy is a total surrender. A total surrender. I'm going to ask Brother Frank if he could lead us in prayer. I want to be a soldier of mercy yes. this morning. If he could lead us in prayer. Everybody, if you could bow your heads this morning. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Lord, any days that we've ever felt pain, God, you always cause multiplication. Lord, any suffering as we see with Job, Lord, at the end, you receive no. Lord, I do want to pray, God, if there would be any frustration or any hardships or, or any difficulties, Lord, that people will be suffering here. That the enemy may just cut them, Lord. That it would turn into multiplication. Lord, that the work of the cross would have its way in every person's heart here. That there would be a death and a burial of the self and a resurrection of the life of us. And Lord, as they would multiply, Lord, individually and in their hearts, going from glory to glory, laying down their glory and picking up the glory of God. Hallelujah. I want to pray, Lord, that as a church, as they would agree with your spirit and say yes, that this church would begin to multiply. Yes. Lord, that the wounds of every individual and as a whole, the body of Christ, would cause a great multiplication, Lord. And I want to pray for a holy fervency, oh Father, and a reverence unto you, Lord, the fear of the living God to be upon them in their walk. That they would, A, see the love of God. And it would keep them, Father, as a child, forever thankful for their sufferings, for their privileges, for the God who gives, and for the God who takes away. Lord, that they would be willing to be a bondservant. Oh, Jesus, come by the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of Him. Reveal, Jesus. Lord, open their eyes to see the wonders of Your law, the wonders in Your meek and lowly heart, the wonders in the Word of God made flesh, the wonders, Lord, of from Revelation, God, all the way back to Genesis, Lord. Lord, you open their eyes to see a Jesus, Lord, that I have never seen, Lord, that the world's never seen such vast revelation, Lord, that they would willingly forsake their lives, let them see that pearl of great price, that treasure, oh God, that great treasure of Jesus, that they would willingly take you and forsake all that's in the field, all that's in their households, all that the world would promise them, all Jesus, because of the revelation that you have given each and every one of them individually, Lord, as a family and as a body here today. Lord, that they be willing to be a soldier, Father. And the suffering of God is not in vain. Let it cause multiplication in their households. And Lord, let their sorrows, God, in everything that the devil has done, Lord. Lord, there is that law, Lord, in, in Proverbs, where the enemy has to restore sevenfold. Yeah. The thief has to restore yeah. sevenfold, God. I declare sevenfold over this congregation. Seven times no grow. Seventy times seven, oh God. Let them grow in Jesus. Yeah. I speak blessing over this church, oh God. I speak increase over this church, oh God. Oh, 
thank you, Lord. I speak all debts that would ever come, Lord. They will be cleared up in Jesus' name. They will be cleared up in Jesus' name. Lord God, you'll visit every household here, my Lord, my God. You'll give them a spirit of excellence, my Lord, my God. And the things that were heard today, my Lord, they will be they will be taught to the people and they will be woven, my Lord, my God. And yes, Lord, even as the meat gets beat by the beet cleaver, yes, Lord, you'll work it into us. You'll make us tender-hearted, oh God, in this church, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord, my God. Thank you, Jesus. God, I see like uh, an example. The Lord will make you like a, a glove. Like a worked in glove, a baseball player, who is a, who the, the leather comes tough at first, but then it gets worked in and it becomes tender. And when the ball comes, it's so easy to receive. And God will give you such tender hearts. Every one of you, every one of you will have tender hearts. You'll be full of the mercy of God, the meekness of God, the lowliness of God. And when the ball comes, when the people come, you'll receive them as a soul. They'll feel comfortable in your house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just want to speak blessing, God, over Pastor and his wife. Lord, and, 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 and every one of these sheep, oh God. Lord, the fellowship, Lord. The fellowship, oh God. We're under the good shepherd, Lord. And Lord, I just want to ask the Lord. Lord, as a gift from my heart, Lord. Lord, on your side, if you would bless your people today. Lord, if you would just have mercy on them. Whatever meaning they have, Lord. If you would flood them with all your fulfilling mercies, God. And you would hear their voice and hear their cries. That you would know the desire of their heart, Lord. And you would yes. continue to make yourself as their portion, God, each and every day. Lord, they, they would drink from you only. And I'd be very, 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 very grateful to you, Father. I thank you for this, God. Thank you for this purpose. Bless this Thank you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.